Good morning, people of Holden and Dala. Today's reading takes us on a continued journey through Jesus' ministry as we read from Luke chapter 6. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, they, he said to him, Stretch out your hand. The man did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Now, during those days, Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples, and he chose twelve of them whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, as we hear about Jesus, and the Sabbath, we all know how important rest and sleep are in our lives. We know how important rest and sleep are for our well-being, our health, and our spirituality. When we sleep enough, we feel more rested, we feel more alert, more patient, and we know that sleep is important for our health and relationships. Yet studies show that most Americans are not getting enough sleep in our lives, and many people struggle with sleep for a variety of reasons. Many of us, because of that, are left feeling tired and groggy and crabby and are more likely to make mistakes at work and even on the road. As we think about how important rest and sleep are today, here are a few statistics about sleep and rest in our own country. Did you know that 11% of Americans sleep with a light on? And when you talk to those who are in Generation Z, over 20% of them sleep with a light on at night. Almost 50% of Americans snore to some degree at night. On average, the average person dreams four to six times a night, but we forget 90% of those dreams by morning. Almost 40% of Americans have reported unintentionally falling asleep at work in the last month. Rest and sleep are so important to our well-being. They are so important to our physical health and our daily life. This morning, as we continue to read through the Gospel of Luke, we encounter Jesus on a Sabbath day, a day set aside rest, renewal, and worship in the Jewish tradition. A dispute arises in our reading about what is lawful to do on the Sabbath day, this day set aside for rest and worship for God's people. But to understand the dispute that Jesus and the religious leaders get into here, we need to first understand what the Sabbath day means for the Jewish people and for us, and the roots are there in our Bible. Going all the way back to the beginning and the story of creation, we hear about God's work 
in creating the heavens and the earth. And then we hear that on the seventh day, God rests. God blesses the seventh day and makes it holy because on it, he rested from his work of creation. The day set aside for holiness and rest in the Jewish tradition has been known as the Sabbath day. The prophets speak in their writings about how important the Sabbath is for God's people. The prophet Isaiah calls the Sabbath a delight, a delightful and honorable holy day meant to find joy in the Lord. Over the history of the Jewish people, the Sabbath day has been significant, and it has been honored by laws like the Ten Commandments that remind God's people to honor the Sabbath and make it holy. But the Jewish community in Jesus' time had also created a wide variety of human-made rules, human-made smaller laws about what could and could not be done on the Sabbath, what actions were allowed on the Sabbath day, what had to be avoided because it was considered work. This is where Jesus and his disciples get into trouble with the religious leaders of his day. Because Jesus and his disciples were seen to be breaking those human-made legalistic rules that governed the Sabbath day and activities for Jewish people. By picking grain to eat, by healing people, Jesus was seen as breaking Sabbath law. When he was confronted by the religious leaders for his actions, he asked them a question. I ask you, is it lawful to do good or do harm? on the Sabbath, to save a life or to destroy it. Jesus comes into conflict many times in scripture with the religious leaders about the rules of the Sabbath and if it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath for the good of God's people. Jesus sees beyond the human made rules to the reason why there is a Sabbath for rest and worship for the well-being and restoration of God's people. In Mark's gospel, when Jesus is confronted about the Sabbath, he says this, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the son of man is also Lord of the Sabbath. In Matthew's gospel, we hear an account similar to our reading today, and Jesus addresses the religious leaders' complaints by saying, what man is there among you who has one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. In John's gospel, after yet another healing, Jesus questions the religious leader, saying, Are you angry with me because I made a man completely well? On the Sabbath. Jesus, in his disagreements with his religious leaders, is not saying that Sabbath and rest are not important. We know that Jesus finds worship and rest on the Sabbath to be incredibly significant in his own life. Jesus worships in the temple and the synagogue frequently. Jesus himself prays and worships and rests just as the Sabbath intends. But he also knows that God's intent for the Sabbath was not to be a burden, was not to be legalistic, but it was for it to be holy and to benefit the good of the people who God called his own. Jesus puts the well-being and wholeness and healing of God's people first, rather than the tedious legalistic laws regarding the Sabbath, because he knows what God intends for the Sabbath is to be for the good of all people. As we consider these readings about the Sabbath and what the Sabbath means in our own time, when life is faster paced than ever before, and there seems to be little time set aside for rest or worship, you and I are still people who need the Sabbath for our own well-being and to worship God. How do we honor the Sabbath in a world where things go completely 24 seven? How do we honor our need for worship and rest when time to just be seems so precious? In addition to coming to worship 
There are many ways to honor the Sabbath and make it a day of rest and holiness and restoration as it was intended. Perhaps honoring the Sabbath means taking time away from those things that drain our energy, those things that are burdens to us, those things that are like work. Too many emails, too many texts, too many loads of laundry. Honoring the Sabbath may mean doing something that is life-giving and restoring for us, whether that's taking time in nature or reading a book or taking a nap. Honoring the Sabbath could mean taking time to invest in our relationships, calling a friend, spending intentional time with family. Honoring the holiness of the Sabbath might mean listening to hymns or setting aside spiritual time, devotional time, to connect with God's presence in your life. Take time this week to consider the Sabbath and your own needs for rest and for worship. Reflect on how you are doing in your life with finding that time for rest, restoration, renewal, and holiness. Where are you feeling well and whole with rest and time for the holy in your life? What are the challenges you find in finding time for rest and holiness that God intends for us as his people? Then think about the Sabbath and how this idea of the Sabbath can help you grow on your journey of faith in this new year that we have just begun. Amen.